What is good? I'm fired up about this one here. We got one that's been a long time coming. A lot of moving parts and pieces. A lot of editing on this man's work. He's the real MVP of this series that we're about to drop. Um, but we have 11 other uh, Dynasty analysts to thank. We got Ryan McDowell, Troy King, John Bauer, Garrett Price, Angelo Kane Fissell, Michael be Bauer, Kane Fossil. Uh, David Wisley, Wilsey, sorry, Jeff Bell, Matt Hicks, and Derek Brown. We got a super flex tight end premium <laughs> rookie mock coming at you, and all of those guys have a team and a full round mock here. We're really excited about this one. It was so fun to record. It was so interesting seeing everybody's different styles, approaches, um, and and really just kind of rankings and tiers on on different guys. And it's great to just get all that different perspective. So this was not so much about us, but about everybody else. So we are we hope you enjoyed as much as we did uh, making it. I'll start the show. All right, leading this off. Leading it off with a banger. Is a man that means no introduction. <laughs> sort of a godfather in this deal here. How you doing, man? Ryan McDowell on the clock at 1-1. Welcome to the show. Yeah, I'm doing well, guys. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me in this draft. And uh, thanks for gifting me with the top overall pick. <laughs> this is this is the pick to have in this year's draft. You know, sure. of course, lots of talk about uh, how weak the draft is, how weak the class is compared to other years. But if you end up with that top pick, whether you earned it the hard way or whether you traded for it, I think you're going to be happy with with what you get. I was happy with with my guy here. I ended up taking Brees Hall, the running back for the New York Jets, first running back drafted in the NFL draft. Of course, uh, I love the landing spot. Love what the Jets did throughout their draft, and and really what they did last year as well. I, I feel pretty confident in what they're building there, especially with that young offense. And I think Brees Hall uh, gained a ton of value. I mean, in, in not only is he the 101 in most rookie drafts, but we're even seeing him as a, as a first rounder in some dynasty startup drafts. Uh, so he certainly has that, uh, that big time value coming into the league. A hundred percent. And that, that was, this was a pretty easy pick for you. There wasn't any consideration for anybody else. Not really. You know, it's, it, it is super flex. It's tight end premium, but even with those settings and of, of course, in a, in a typical year that would uh, impact the choice, but it didn't push me away from the running back this time. Uh, no, no quarterbacks to consider here in my opinion, and certainly no tight ends. Any, uh, since this is sort of a, a Shanahan disciple offense, any, any thoughts in the back of your mind of saying, haven't really seen necessarily anybody get that, full on bell cow role in that sort of a situation recently, uh, unless it was uh, Mitchell last year, who was just kind of a product of a bunch of injuries um, and played well but and, and played well. But is there any, any reservations with, with Brees or are you full throttle? No, full throttle. No, no reservations. Um, you, you know, San Francisco hasn't spent that type of draft capital on, yeah. on a back in quite some time. So they just kind of had a, a collection of, you know, of spare parts, honestly. I mean, even Mitchell with the success he had was, was the day three pick. Um, and, and, you know, guys like Jeff Wilson and Mostert who were just either late draft picks or undrafted when, when they came into the league. Um, I mean, even when they tried to, to spend up on, on a guy like Sermon, it, yeah. it didn't necessarily work out. No. So, um, I mean, I, I don't think it's going to be all Brees Hall all the time. I think Michael Carter has certainly earned a role with his playing time or, or his performance uh, as a rookie, so uh, he'll he'll have a role, but I, I, that doesn't scare me away from Brees Hall at all. Yeah, I, yeah, I mean, love the pick. You know, we cover uh, the notorious DLF ADP that drops every month. We've been doing it all off season long each month, doing a, a review, and and I like to think we've been trying to drive Brees Hall's value up. It's been going <laughs> up every single month. It's been working, and, yeah, and now it's peaking. And you know, you got to take him here. I love it. And uh, you know, you guys can catch Ryan over at the DLF. Uh, dynasty podcast that they put out a show each week um i was listening to the one a few weeks ago where you guys were talking about the 23 class and mm -hmm. you know where would you trade uh these rookie picks for the 23 class um and and we've been we use that kind of a ca as a catalyst been asking all the guys that we've had on um which you know for the listeners we've recorded these guys each each 
kind of different nights um and, and so ryan's one of the last ones to go so we've heard a lot from these other other uh industry guys that have been that are that you're going to hear from in this mock and we've been asking them which if their pick if they trade it for a random 2023 first which obviously i'm not going to ask you if you trade Brees Hall for a random 23 first right you can't do that I, you know i don't even want to dignify that <laughs> response with a question right so but on the show i was listening to you know uh you were asked if if you could projected to be a top three pick next year if you're looking at a really really bad team in your league would you trade Brees Hall for projected top three 2023 pick you know I don't think I would I mean you if you've got Brees Hall in your pocket with that 101 pick do it. um you know a lot of things can happen and as much as we love Bijan Robinson and we love some of these quarterbacks coming in um there's a lot of time for things to happen, either those players to lose value through uh, through injury or, or poor play. Uh, you know, maybe – Stay a year. Um, you know? Right, exactly. Maybe they stay a year in school. Maybe they, they get that big NIL deal. deal. Right. Who knows what could happen. So yeah. it, if you've got that running back and you, you really believe in Brees Hall as – uh, a potential top five dynasty running back, which value wise, he's almost there already anyway. Right. Uh, but if you believe in him, I, I think you just hang on to him. So what, what would be the line of uh, demarcation there where you would move that pick for the 20 for a random 23 right. first? Yeah, it would, it would be higher for me maybe than many, just because I, I think after Hall, you're looking at a lot of wide receivers. And, and I, like, I like all those guys, right? I like all those wide receivers in that range. I would be glad to have them on my team. But I think right now that's kind of the strength of, of the dynasty landscape in general is just all those wide receivers, right? Sure. Um, I mean, there's, there's 30 or 40 that we're really excited to have. And, and now you have these five or six rookies at the top of the class in with that group um, because of the depth of the wide receiver position and knowing if I've got the two, three, four, five pick, that's probably what I'm taking. You know, I'm, I'm probably willing to trade the the three or four or five if I think it's potentially a non-playoff uh, first rounder. Uh, and if it's just random, you know, no, no idea at all, uh, then certainly anything after five is up for grabs. Okay. Even so, Kenny Pickett not in that conversation. You're you're you'd trade it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, well, Pick, Pickett's not really in the conversation for me. Even even in a super flex league, I, I think I would probably have him. I think I've got him ranked 11th right now in, okay. in super flex rookie rankings. Gotcha. All right. Well, Ryan McDowell, one one Brees Hall. Merry Christmas. <laughs> we'll see you for two. Weeks. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Sounds good. All right. So we're on to one two here. We got Troy King at T King mode, a contributor for Yahoo, a contributor for the football guys. I'm sure if you guys are on Twitter, you know who this man is. Probably doesn't need much of an introduction. One two, you're on the clock. How you doing, man? Thanks for being here. Nah, man, yo, I appreciate you inviting me. Thank you so much for bringing me on the show again. I've had so much fun last time, so I'm glad I get to be back on. But man, at one two, look, obviously Breeze Hall went. Sure. But listen. Drake London. Drake London is my selection at one, two for a couple of reasons. One, he's six, five. And people, let me start off with the negative, right? People are going to hate on him because he can't separate or whatever. I think that was completely overrated in terms of a knock on him coming into the NFL. Agree. But he's six, five. He's going to be a red zone target as well as the Atlanta Falcons have nobody, right? We obviously know about the Calvin Ridley suspension, but right. even, even besides that, He's an alpha, right? He's an alpha. He gets contested catches. He's, again, he's a big receiver. He's athletic. And he's going to not only work, you know, between the 20s, he's going to be that red zone threat. And obviously you still have Kyle Pitts there, but there's no other wide receiver competition. I believe he's going to get peppered with targets. He's, I feel like we get well over 100 targets this season, his rookie year. I'm extremely excited, so I feel like I had to go. And, and it's going to be a bad team. Also, it's going to be a bad team, so I'm expecting them to have to throw a lot. Sure. So these are all the reasons why I had to go with Drake London. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. I like I like London. I feel like there was definitely uh, not enough love for the stuff he can do in the intermediate, being a chain mover and some after-the-catch stuff was, was, was pretty solid with Drake. So I, I think he's a better athlete than people are giving him credit for with the, the non-separation uh, crap. I don't know. I'm not buying it, so I'm feeling it. I'm feeling, but no, no. Was there any Kenneth Walker in this 
uh, range for you? Where you you strictly are you a wide receiver guy in a rookie draft or how? No, it's just like so. I thought about Walker. It's more like I was just trying to think about the situation, right? I right. kind of think about the situation. And I'm just like with Kenneth Walker. I believe he's extremely talented. I the thing about him that I'm worried about, and again, obviously we talk dynasty, we talk long term, but with Seattle. Is he going to get the Chris Carson treatment? Like, he's just going to be the workhorse? Are they going to use multiple bodies? Like, I just don't know. And I'm not, it doesn't even have to be about like Rashad Penny necessarily. Cause yeah, like coming in, I don't know how the workload's going to be between him and Penny. And God knows what's happening with Chris Carson. But beyond that, again, Walker's going to be fine. He's going to be a good running back. But I have to, I am worried about the PPR upside. And I just don't, you know, Seattle, they're very run heavy, but. Again, I just don't know how he works into that offense. And right. again, like Brees Hall is my RB one. Ken Walker is a fantastic talent. He's going to be just fine. But in this range, I was thinking to myself, like, who's going to be immediate? And again, like most of the leagues I'm playing in are PPR. So sure. I want, you know, and and if I could get an alpha wide receiver who I know is going to get guaranteed targets versus a running back who might share the workload who's not going to catch passes even if he's uber talented like unless you you know unless he goes down this nick chubb derrick henry path of just being very efficient and score touchdowns i don't know so that's why i had to go drake london here all right i think i think a lot of people would be would agree with you there so um all right drake london at one two at the one three spot, we have John Bauer at the John Bauer Club, the host of the Dynasty Theory podcast. And you can find that podcast at Dynasty Theory FF and him at the Bauer Club. How's it going, John? Good to have you back. Yeah, thanks for having me on again. This was a uh, this was a, a fun mock. It was challenging. It was it, it was it was a good exercise to get ready for for you know actual rookie drafts. Right. Right. So so we've some time has passed and some time will probably pass before this goes out. So if you feel the need to throw any caveats in there, go for it. Um, but other than that, you were on the clock at one three. And what are you thinking here? Kenny Walker's there. <laughs> he, he's there and he's going to stay there, guys. <laughs> when when you add me on for the full mock draft episode, I took this gentleman with my second pick at one oh five. So uh, at one oh three, I'm taking Traylon Burks. Still super excited about him. Not excited about the report that he had to leave practice early. Yeah. But that, and he had the bad drop. Over but, there walking around like George Jefferson's wife, old Wheezy. <laughs> Wheezy. <laughs> Please save the baby. <laughs> but the, the one report's not going to, not going to rattle me too much. No. I, I'm, I'm, I'm still excited about the prospect of Traylon Burke steps into a really nice situation there, potentially being. Uh, the one a with Robert Woods coming back from injury. And I, I, I still just, I, I like the profile, but we went into all the analytics and the film and the, the, the 40 speed wasn't what we were looking for at the combine, but you watch him on tape. You see that high end speed. Once he gets going, he's a runaway train. So Traylon Burks, one Oh three, really excited with that pick. I love it. Anytime the analytical guy says, "But when you watch the tape, I right, gets make, gives me movement." See, clocked it makes him. me si- it makes me sick a little bit, to be honest with you. <laughs> clocked him out of high MPHs on the on the on the gun on the chip. So so you're good. You know, you got all the data you need right there. Right, so right. No, you didn't go Garrett Wilson or Kenny Walker. Uh, so you 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 were Burks before draft, Burks after draft. You're you're all in. No no Wilson consideration or Walker. So. <sighs> I like Garrett Wilson, but we have seen that New York Jets discount on him in rookie drafts. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm in uh, several leagues and you start to see him slip down to that 106, 107, 108. And because of that, I actually think I have possibly more Garrett Wilson than Traylon Burks because of that (laughs) price discount. Sure. But within that tier, it's still Traylon Burks for me. And then Kenneth Walker, I don't want, we don't have to get into it, <laughs> but you gentlemen know that I was a little bit lower on him. You hate consensus. him. I, I know, I know, I hate him. I hate him, but I was a little <laughs> bit lower on than consensus and certainly lower than you gentlemen. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, but Sky Moore hasn't got into the, with the landing spot, hasn't got into there. Jamison Williams still not into that territory for you. 
Jamison Williams, uh, again, really like him in that 106, 107 spot. Sky Moore, he falls in that de- the dead zone for me. I love if I have the 109 and Sky Moore goes before me because now I know I'm probably getting Chris Olave 109. Mm-hmm. Um, but Sky Moore, there are some issues with his profile for me. But that Kansas City landing spot certainly bolstered his his rookie draft capital here. And I've seen him go as early as 104. And to me, mm-hmm. that is absolutely crazy. Agreed. That is really buying into the landing spot. And it's something that I told myself after, especially A.J. Brown, when he came out, ah, that's a bad landing spot, guys. I'm going to drop him a little bit. I told myself, don't get too caught up on landing spot. And then I freaking did it some more with Keyshawn Vaughn. But after that, I really, I really said, don't, don't yeah. let landing spot well, dictate where you take these guys. And sp- specifically with the Chiefs, we've already learned that isn't the God landing spot for every right. rookie. Like, look what happened to McCole Hardman. Look what for happened to Clyde Edwards Alaire. I mean, yep. which I still like Clyde. I think he's been banged up. I'd like to make an excuse for him, but like, that's a buzz pick if you took him at one one or one two at this point. Like yeah, you, you fucked up and and you yep. did it because he's of the landing spot and like come on, I can't haven't you learned a little bit that you that Sky Moore isn't a sure thing because he went to the Chiefs and and how fast also landscapes change, especially like maybe four or five years ago there there was some you know. It can change, but it's going to take a year. Now things mm-hmm. can change two, three months, and we could just be—you yep. know—people want out. This guy does this. This guy does that. He's holding out for this. That you know, that just everything moves so fast. So the landing spot, you know, while Bur- it's good for Burks because there isn't any competition right now, um, you know, we don't—you don't want to just move somebody all the way up to one, two, or three, or four because of Chiefs. Although, and, and, that, I, and that's exactly I, what we're seeing. I guess there is some people who had him wide receiver three or four pre-draft but not for me but now i am liking the hype with him and i don't want to get too far away from the Traylon burks pick Mm -hmm. but with sky Moore, you see like i said if i have the 109 i I like when i see sky Moore go before that yeah but if i have the 109 or 110 and sky Moore is on the board still i know there's probably somebody that's gonna pay up a little bit that i can move back to 201 202 maybe pick up an extra second along the way because ultimately i don't see a big difference between that 109 and 201 or 202 so i'm more than happy for somebody else to get excited about that landing spot with sky more and allow me to pick up that extra value yeah. elsewhere love it all right so burks at one three and we'll we'll, uh, we'll see you again at two three all right so moving right along we're back on the clock at one four and we have michael bauer of Dynasty Rewind fame, the host of that show over there. You can find him at Rewind CEO on Twitter. And he is now on the clock at 1 4. What's up, man? How you doing? How you doing, guys? Happy to be here. Always wanted to do this with you guys. Hey, hey we do the cracks around here. <laughs> that was okay for a craft beer can. Though. It wasn't bad. It, it wasn't, wasn't bad. bad. Jay Wayne big timed you, but that's okay. Cheers. Cheers. Do we talk about what we're drinking now, too? Do you guys still do that? No, we don't do that. Okay. If you want to, the floor is yours. You're on the clock, baby. You try, yeah, I mean, are they paying you for this? What's up? <laughs> no, it is my favorite beer. It's a Mui. It's from Bond Place in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Bethlehem. If you're ever on the south side of Bethlehem, go check out Bond. Shout out to the Lehigh Valley. Uh, Jahan Shout Dotson, Lehigh out Valley out guy. Jesus. Yeah, Jahan Dotson. Man. I love love me some Jahan Dotson. People are like, oh, you love him. That's a homer pick. I'm like, the dude's good. Just All right, you're on the clock at one four. Is it Jahan Who you do you have? Sorry, I took Garrett Wilson. I did not take Jahan right. Dotson at the one four. All We're right. gonna get some thumbs downs for that if you did. So good, glad you took yeah. Garrett Wilson. I, I did, man. I've seen some crazy stuff go on in drafts and mocks. I'm sure you guys have too. Uh, but Garrett Wilson kind of felt to me. I like the way that look. Brees Hall at the one one consensus. I think. London at the one, two Burks at the one, three. I was really happy with this because Garrett Wilson's my wide receiver one. And he has been for pre-draft for quite some time. I'm not worried about the Jets landing spot. A lot of people are maybe Zach Wilson can support three wide receivers, right? Got Corey Davis out there. You got Elijah Moore. We got Garrett Wilson, but uh, I think Garrett Wilson's going to be a target hog. Could the Jets actually be exciting by the way? Like, is that a thing that could actually happen? They want it to be, but they want, it seems like they could be. It's definitely not out of the realm of possibilities. If, if Zach Wilson can put on some muscle, look in best shape <laughs> of his life, just take a little step forward. I think, you know, I think he could certainly there's 
enough opportunity over there enough enough uh i, th- I think the play calling is going to be pretty solid you know i like a good so kyle shanahan disciple so all around a lot of 49ers over there so i like that uh but yeah i can't really argue with you at 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 one four there i, I would probably take kenneth walker but uh what any anything to add to the was, to the one four rationale there was wilson your one wide receiver one pre-draft he was he was and you know i had thought about possibly moving drake london or even Traylon burks up just because of their you know where they went but it looks like they're going to be forced into being wide receiver ones from the get-go that doesn't always work out with rookies garrett wilson's not going to have that on him i understand what you're saying about kenneth walker i thought about that but I'm kind of approaching this like if this was a real startup where, you know, a lot of leagues they do, you draft rookies and then you don't do anyone that's been in the league older than a rookie. You know what I'm talking about? You guys ever do a league like that? And then the next year you do another rookie draft and it's first and second year players and you keep adding on. So I did this draft kind of like that where you never heard of a league like that? Jay, you're looking at me like, what I don't think so, man. I'm actually in one right now. It's really fun. We just call it the rookie only league. So like CMC is not rostered because we started the league last year or two years ago. So he was already in the league. We started with those rookies. Um, it, it's a lot of fun. I recommend trying one, but I, I did this draft pick. Like if I'm starting this as a league right now, who do I think could be more valuable to my roster long term? Predominantly that is a wide receiver. And I think Garrett Wilson is the guy over Kenneth Walker. And that's nothing against Kenneth Walker. He can catch, by the way. I'm tired of that slander. The Kenneth Walker can't catch slander. But Garrett Wilson's my guy. He's been my wide receiver one since not quite day one, but pretty close to it. Yeah, I mean, I can't. If if, if your wide receiver one falls to you at 1-4, you know, I can't be I can't be mad at that, you know. And if, if, if people want to take any of these – top four wide receivers over Garrett Wilson or uh, over uh, Kenneth Walker, then, you know, I can't, I can't be that mad at it. I can't really argue too much against you. I will say that, you know, I I'll have Kenneth Walker at one, two. I feel pretty, pretty strong about that just from a running back positional scarcity. uh, and, And the fact that I really, really like Kenneth Walker, you know, I mean, that dude is just a beast and the talent, I feel like is phenomenal and will play out. And I'm with you. I think I think that he can catch. Um, he can, yeah. All right. Well, it looks like we lost Casey. Uh, having some technical difficulties. We're in uh, separate locations for this go round. Uh, had a had a close contact. So trying to play it safe. Stay safe out there, kids. Uh, COVID is coming back around. So. Uh, make sure you stay safe. But uh, we can continue this thing. We don't need Casey anyway. Uh, well, I think we we're pretty much wrapped up with 1-4. Uh, you know, Garrett Wilson, your wide receiver one, fell to you at 1-4. Can't be mad that you jumped on that, took that pick. Uh, can't really argue with it. Like like we said, you know, probably would have taken Kenneth Walker if it was my pick. But that's not the point. That's This is your, 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 uh, your pick. So you got to go with what's in your plums. Uh, I think we can uh, wrap that up. Any last thoughts? No, that's it. Love me some Garrett Wilson, though. All right. So at 1-5, we got at Dynasty Price of the Dynasty Nerds. Of course, you guys all know who he is. No introduction needed. Not really. So at 1-5, it seems like he got a nice little uh, gift here. So what you thinking, man? Who are you, who you taking at 1-5? Yeah, this, this was exactly what happened because I'm not even the biggest, like, truther on this guy. But when Kenneth Walker falls to 1-5, you kind of just have to take the value there. Yeah. Uh, and that's exactly what happened. Lucky. Uh, I, I – exactly. <laughs> like, it, he's with Pete Carroll uh, in Seattle, so we know they're going to run the crap out of the football. Uh, he got the draft capital that you were, were hoping for. And especially, you know, I was thinking if this was, you know, really my team, I know that there's a lot of wide receiver depth, but – there's not a lot of running back running back depth though. Right. So I could always trade back into the end of the first round or beginning of the second round and grab another receiver if I wanted to. But after Kenneth Walker, it's a lot of question marks at the running back position. So it just felt like too good a value to pass up and and I had to snag him. Yeah. Well, everyone knows our feelings on Kenneth Walker. We love the guy. Uh, I, w- I guess you could call us truthers. Uh, one follow-up <laughs> question. Would you trade that pick 
for a random 2023 first. And and if if not, then where would the line of kind of demarcation be where you would say, hey, I'll sell this for a random 2023 first? So there's four players that I wouldn't have done it with. Kenneth Walker is one of the four. Nice. Um, I'm not as high on Traylon Burks, so it would have been four of the five that went ahead of of me here uh, and, and Kenneth Walker, but not Traylon Burks. So anything one, four or later, but here it would be one, five or later because I got Kenneth Walker. So after one, five, I'd be willing to. Gotcha. Perfect, man. Well, don't really have too many follow-up questions here on the one, five. Seems like you had to do what you had to do there. and and, done. and love it. So, yeah. All right. At one, six, we have at Angelo underscore fantasy, the man that needs no introduction. Of course, the maestro of movement. Uh, you can catch him at angeloanalysis.com. How you doing, buddy? And you're on the clock at one, six. So. King of kinesiology. <laughs> Oh man, all the, all the nicknames, man. I, yeah. I appreciate you guys having me on again. Um, this is gonna be a lot of fun, just kind of recapping this draft that we did, this mock. Um, but yeah, like as you guys already plugged, man, you can find me on Twitter at Angelo underscore Fantasy. Um, all the stuffs on the website at AngeloAnalysis dot com. Gotta check that um, out. Um, yeah, man, a lot of fun putting it together. So lots of strong done, free content plus some some extra for your pleasure. Oh yeah, Kenneth Walker currently free. That's correct. Let's go. Um, but yeah, man. So my pick at one six was Sky Moore. Um, reason being, when I when I did AGS and I went through the draft guide, he was the only one left in the Pro Bowl tier. Him and Malik Willis. So I'm for what I do in terms of the draft guide, I try to get everybody in talent tiers. So I know where the talent drop off is in the draft. So I don't really account for landing spot right now. Um, I really just more so want to know purely on talent, like if this athlete's going to succeed or fail. Mm -hmm. So that's why I pick Sky Moore. I think he's one of the more versatile receivers in this class. I really liked his ability to separate at all levels, which is really important when you're talking about a Chiefs offense that is very vertical. Um, it's going to be pretty important to, for a guy to be able to move around and be you know, in the slot, you know, outside you know in the backfield potentially with sky more too um and just be that versatile chess piece that that offense needs at the receiver position so i love sky Moore's game and think that he's going to really translate well to what the chiefs do in andy reed's um, west coast style offense so for me that was my pick um and i just i love the upside i think the floor is really good too um especially in kansas city yeah, you got to like the landing spot and, and the, the talent and, and the not being. He hadn't even been really that long at that position. So uh, should be more sky for sky here. You know, he's, he's still learning, still growing. Um, got to say, though, this is probably the highest I've seen sky more go in a rookie draft. Yeah, it's interesting to me because so when I did, uh, I think the other two players that would probably be around him would be like Jameson Williams and Kenny mm -hmm. Pickett, which are right, which were the two picks after. Right. Him. Why right. not Jameson? Over Sky Moore. Well, I think the floor is a lot lower. Um, when I watched them both, actually, Jamison, I think, graded out maybe like a smidge higher on film because he has the he has higher upside. But I don't think by much. The floor is a lot lower on Jamison, though, because there's a lot more question marks. Mm -hmm. Now we have an added question mark in Detroit. Sure. If Jared Goff's throwing the football for three or four years, you're in trouble. <laughs> yeah. Like, it doesn't bowl well for your third level targets. Um, but it's just one of those things, too, when you look at the ACL, you look at he only produced in one year in college. Sure. You know, there there's a lot of questions there about is he going to you know return to the, the player he was and is he going to be utilized in a three level role? Right. And so, like, we've seen it, you know, in the past with with, with speedsters like Henry Ruggs like we've, and like most recently. And these guys are going really high. Because the NFL wants to be more vertical, 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 and stress defenses out. And that's what Jamison Williams' role, that's what his role is going to be in the NFL. Is it going to be more of the threat of Jamison Williams or his actual play that's going to make the difference? And in fantasy, I don't think we're going to see a guy like Williams essentially have more receptions than a guy like a lot, like a guy like Alave and a guy like Moore. Yeah. I think those two guys in particular are guys that I like more from a PPR standpoint to provide more of a safety net. Um, and the ceiling too, especially in Kansas city, I don't think is 
it's very minute, if any, when we're talking about Williams, the more in terms of their overall talent ceiling and, and career ceiling in fantasy. All right. So who, who would have had to been on the board at one six for you not to take Sky Moore? Great question. Uh, I would have I had Sky Moore over Kenneth Walker. Okay. So Woo. Garrett Wilson Woo. is the last guy. Okay. Garrett Wilson is the last guy for me that I would have I would have had to take. Um, but that pick was pretty much, you know, if, if Kenneth Walker, I knew Kenneth Walker was probably going to go before that. Mm-hmm. Usually that happens. That happened in my drafts. Yeah. Um, that's what you've been seeing throughout the industry. Sure. So uh, that was pretty much cemented. No chance Kenny Pickett was was going right there for you. Um, I don't I, see. I'm not like I like Kenny Pickett, but like if I'm drafting a quarterback, like I want that quarterback to be not like QB two. Yeah. Okay. Like I want that guy to be you know essentially a perennial QB one, uh, nearly a top five, top seven quarterback. I don't think that's Kenny Pickett. Yeah. So we'll see, but. Your boy um, Kane, your boy Kane Fissell, he's uh, he's next up in line, and and he's he's got some he's got some Kenny Pickett love for you. So I love it though. I love yeah. it though. All right, so we're moving on to pick one seven. We got my main Kane Fissell, not to be confused with Kane Fossil, uh, uh, at from the Devi Marketplace. Of course, I'm sure you guys all recognize him from that esteemed uh, collection of podcasts that he has over there. How's it going, man? Hey, doing well. Thanks for having me on. Uh, you know, I it's fun to do these drafts because um, I seem to like my picks in these mock drafts a whole lot more than my picks in uh, in my league. So it's, yeah. it's it's nice to feel good about your picks for once, you know? Yeah. Uh, so like I said, we, you can find him at Devi underscore Kane on Twitter. Uh, you can find all of his podcast work at Devi Marketplace uh, on Strong, Twitter uh, intro as well. Over there. Got got the Gabe man bun on the wrap for the intro. Yeah, like you that. bet, man. The, <laughs> he gets the, around. The fun... he do... I love when Gabe's rapping. Yeah, so the fun part about that is like, so he recorded that just after uh, his his first kid was born, mm-hmm. and the only time his kid would stop crying is if he played the Debbie Marketplace intro. <laughs> so he's like, I've heard your intro so many times, <laughs> and I'm honestly just about <laughs> sick of it. Yeah, I was like, that's <laughs> I, I like it though. Nice, nice. All right, one seven. Who you All got, right, Debbie Kane? Who you got for us? What are you thinking? Yeah, so th- to me, this is a really, really easy pick. Um, okay, you're going to hear other people disagree with me, but I'm going to tell you why Kenny Pickett is one of the safest picks in the first oh. round. First in, quarterback in off the board. He goes. So, so here's, hit us with here's it. Here's why. Here's why. Right. If you look at the six players that are drafted before Kenny Pickett, mm-hmm. right, and mm-hmm. and. You've gotten to this 107. You know those other six players. Kenny Pickett is going to be worth more in value and drafted higher than them in startups in a year than probably half of those players. Realistically, yeah. right? Yeah, like, probably if, fair. If you think, if you think f- like all four of those wide receivers that are drafted before Kenny Pickett in this rookie draft are going to hit, like probably not, right? There, By the law of averages, why, yeah, yeah. There's a re- there's a reason why we believe that that rookie draft picks, and we're hoping that like 50 percent is good is a good hit rate for the first round, right? So why are we assuming that Kenny Pickett, the only first round quarterback, isn't going to increase in value when he's behind Mitchell Trubisky? And I don't even think behind Mitchell Trubisky is right. probably the right phrase. Like he's at just least they're adjacent right Trubisky. now. At yeah, this yeah. minute, they're adjacent. <laughs> yeah. So if, if you're trying to think of so the, let's just go back to the way that I view fantasy football, right? Sure. My plan of fantasy football is trying to accrue as much value as possible, right? Because I still don't have to set another lineup for three and a half months, right? Mm-hmm. So it doesn't matter if I have zero running backs, if I have, have zero wide receivers. Like none of that matters if I can match my starting requirements right now because none of it matters, right? By gathering right. value. Right, because we all know that there's going to be a few running backs, unfortunately, that end up getting hurt, right? There's going to be some wide receivers that we don't even know about that are going to become the wide receiver two on their team that we have no clue. It might be due to injury. It might be due to a coaching change. It might be due to a multitude of different reasons, right? So my plan is to try to accrue as much value as possible, and by my plan, at least when you're trying to accrue value, you want to try to see at least a little bit into the future, right? Who is mm-hmm. going to at least 
accrue some value or at the worst hold their value. And the one position that holds their value more than anything else is Kenny Pickett. Yeah. I or, excuse I me, well, quarterback and quarterback, Kenny, right. Kenny Pickett, right. Right. Because if you look at last year, right, you had Zach Wilson, who was outperformed by Mike White. Right. And how many spots did he go down in ADP? Three. Right. Trey Lance is still a second round pick. Straight uh, facts. I like that. I like know, that. Uh, Trevor, Trevor Trey, Lawrence, still Trey, a second round pick. Yeah, Trey Lance Trey was Lance not good when he played. played three games. And wasn't like, good, I, eye test wise, at least. Right. I love Trey Lance, right? I actually know Trey Lance. He's a good dude. I enjoy him. He's great. From Marshall, like, right? Yeah, Marshall, Minnesota, baby. I used Shout to out. His mom. <laughs> like, but realistically, right? He didn't change his value. So why are all of a sudden we believe that some of these quarterbacks, just because they weren't drafted in the top five, top 10, whatever, are all of a sudden going to go down in value? The one thing that we know about the Pittsburgh Steelers is they always think they can compete. Mm -hmm. Always. Right. Right. There's no Pittsburgh Steeler team that has ever been a rebuild in my lifetime. No, not, not really. That's not going to change. They still have a great defense. They're hoping that Kenny Pickett can come in right. with good offensive weapons. You have Najee Harris. You have Deontay Johnson. You have Chase Claypool. You have great supporting uh, cast added Pickens. Yeah. Yeah. Got Frymouth. And like they have such a good team. They're going to continue to try and win games. And you think they're not going to try and do that with Kenny Pickett over. Uh, Who's got underrated, you know, athleticism. Oh, 100 percent. Right. There's just nothing super sexy about Pickett. That's why people don't love him. And then you get the small hands. So you got people just hating him for that. One, he one year have, of big like, production, really arm. But like he does everything pretty well, can scramble, can throw on the run, can 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 move around in the. How can he be that well? much Accurate. worse than the statue of Ben Roethlisberger last right. year, though, with with what's surrounding him and the familiarity I, with Matt Canada? I I'm, I firmly believe Matt uh, Big Ben had a negative um, yards per target. Like, I think he had a negative a dot, right? Like it, there was just that, that team was terrible, right? Big Ben right. was terrible on that team. And the reason why they didn't make the playoffs or maybe they did and they shouldn't have, I can't remember. Um, right. But either, either way, right. Kenny Pickett is incredibly safe. He's on a good team and sure. He's not like the best quarterback, but this is the exact same argument, right? That people will say why Mac Jones is safe. Why Mac Jones, Mac Jones is the best quarterback too that you can have on your team. Sure. Why isn't Kenny Pickett that one? Right. Well, would you rather have Mac Jones or Kenny Pickett? Um, Kenny Pickett by a lot. Okay. And the fun part is that Mac Jones is worth more than Kenny Pickett. I just traded Mac Jones for Kenny Pickett in the second round pick. Yeah. I, hey, I mean, I I like it. I like coming with the heat. I like coming with with some some conviction on on Love what it. you're going with there because it is definitely a little controversial. There, regardless of who that those first six guys are, and and like we said, Sky Moore was in there, and Jamison Williams wasn't, which is typically who is usually in that that kind of top six. And that's I I think I'm about right there. Where yeah, after those guys, after Jamison, if he was in the top six and moved Sky out of there, then I'm down with Pickett. But you're saying you would do that. Would you have taken? Uh, you can take him at one six, even is what you're saying. Or, or what would be the line of demarcation where you're not taking Pickett? Um, I would take about the one oh six. Okay, right. so right I, where you yeah. one after where you were. Yeah, so I would take him over Sky Moore. Uh, who who would have to be at one six or one seven for you not to take Pickett because somebody else took somebody somewhere? Uh, the first five picks of this draft. So Brees Hall, Drake London, okay. Traylon Burks, uh, Garrett Wilson, Kenneth Walker. That, that's okay, so about, we're pretty much on the same page, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to take Jameson, too, I think, but I'm not going to be too mad, you know. The 1-7, I think, is perfect. Yeah, I, I, I think realistically, right, like, Kenny Pickett feels gross here, but realistically, like, in a year, I'd rather have Kenneth, Kenny Pickett than half the players that were drafted in the first round of this rookie mm-hmm. mock, right? Yeah. Most likely, I mean, it can be it can it can certainly turn quickly, but for the most part, they're going to at least hold some value. And there's going to be I think there's going to be enough shit, like you said, surrounding him and the Steelers organization that there'll be enough of like, yeah, you know, he might have had a couple of spots where he struggled, but we're still we're still OK with it. We saw enough that was that was good enough to hold uh, plenty of value. And, and hey, it was his first year. So, you know, obviously he can get better. 
So right, and and if we just look at the stats, right? So I'm not a numbers guy, right? But at the Devin Marketplace, we have Nelly, who is a huge nerd. Uh, nerd. So, oh, 100 <laughs> um, percent. And he he owns it, right? Um, Got it. But the one thing that translates better than anything else in fantasy production. Um, from college to the NFL is rushing production at the quarterback position, right? Um, it has the easiest correlation that we found. Um, so Kenny Pickett has a 12% rushing market share in college, which means we can be close to averaging or expecting two to three fantasy points per game on the ground from Kenny Pickett. Now I he realize drives, that, man, he's, he's good on the ground. Yeah, and like Kenny Pickett, he's not the fastest guy, right? We have Justin Fields out there, right? We have Trey Lance incredibly fast. We have Jalen Hurts. We have Josh Allen. We have all these guys that can run really, really well. Lamar. Um, but the, 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 yeah, Lamar Jackson, right? We have, But it's the same conversation that we heard all the time with, with Aaron Rodgers, right? Right. Right. Like He's athletic like, does, enough. Yeah, how does Aaron Rodgers always have, have 300 yards rushing? Right. Every year, right? Like, that's always the question. How does he do it? Um, Kenny Pickett's the exact same way. Um, like it. And you could, there's probably a case that you can make that Kenny Pickett is actually better on the ground than Aaron Rodgers, um, just going by his, his uh, rushing market share. Um, mm-hmm. So, like, I, I think you're setting Pickett up nicely um, to be your quarterback, too. Um, I don't, is he ever going to be a quarterback one? No, I don't think so. But, like, quarterback twos matter a hell of a lot more than wide receiver twos in fantasy football. Yeah, I mean, worse. I mean, even if he if you draft him to be your QB three off the rip, I mean, it's even to make a move to upgrade quarterbacks, it's really hard to not have that quarterback in the holster to be able to try to even upgrade the quarterback position if you want to. So right. I can't argue with you in, in any which way there. So, um, all right, man, we'll, we'll check back in on with you on uh, two seven here. All right, finally, it's our pick. I say our pick, but Casey made most of these picks. We got the one eight. Indeed. Pretty much an easy pick. Who you got? Yeah, I mean, Sky Moore, Angelo takes him at 1-6. Pickett then goes at 1-7, making this a super easy choice at 1-8. You take Jameson Williams and, and you, you know, just <laughs> give it one of those. Next. Um, I know the I'll question trade, that I'll, we've been... I'll trade my 20... Three first for Jameson Williams. Fuck I know that's it. the question following up, and that would be because we've asked everybody that question. Um, so we indeed have traded uh, the one seven or one eight into the one seven or one eight for a random twenty three first. Essentially, I believe it was one eight. Um, I said one seven on a couple of and, those, and but... some extra stuff on on there as well. But I mean, look, Jameson Williams. If he hits, I think he's going to hit hard, and it's just a really really fun shot to take. If he goes out there and looks like he looked in college where he's just game-breaking and just a menace, then it's going to be awesome, and it's going to hit really hard, and it's there's there's a not much of a more fun swing to take in this draft, and I think he's worthy of, of shooting one. Now, in that, in that regard where we traded the first, we had, we had another we one. We had another one. Now, I know you're saying you should be hanging on to those, but it's a start three wide receiver league. We needed receivers. We're trying to play, and, and Jamison Williams is – a fun of swing. The talent level is there. It's 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 you can see it plain as day. It's just is it going to translate? Is it going? Is it the best situation? We shall see. But I'm I'm excited for it, and and I believe the answer that everybody that I would probably give that everyone would dislike is basically being like, if I had ten drafts, I would trade the twenty three for Jameson and half of them, and and not in the other half, which I know is a super lame answer. I mean, who listening but, here has one dynasty right. team? You know what I'm saying? Like. You got to diversify. You can't. But, Jameson's not the guy that I, I want to get Jameson, every single draft. But I do want him. We took James John. We took if, we took Jonathan Taylor in every draft we could do. Anytime we could move up and get Jonathan Taylor, we would take him. Anytime we had an opportunity in a startup, we have a lot of Jonathan Taylor. Jameson Williams, I'll diversify some. But I'll, I'll diversify I gotta get a some. Piece. I got to get a piece. He, I got to get some. If, they're, if he's falling down to one eight, yeah, then I'm, then I'm excited, and you know, I'm. I'm I might be interested to try to trade something to get in there. Just absolutely. You know, most people are going the other way, but there's some pretty, you know, elite level athleticism there with Jameson Williams. That it's could not just, just that crazy. too, you know. That 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 so, takes it over the top. That makes it so spicy and sexy, and um, might have to wait a minute, but it's fine. Now, if if, if Sky Moore was there, it'd be a little bit more of a you know a question. 
at, at that pick, which is that where I think that it should be. I think Sky Moore should probably be at that one eight area. You want to take Olave? Yeah, sure. You know, but, I think I'd rather. I think I'll lean Olave. Yeah, but I'm not. I'm not as aggressively trying to trade up to get that pick if Jameson's off the board. I feel like yeah. oh, with Jameson, sure. I just sure. oh, oh, I just want to get some. Let me sure. get some. Definitely want some. Let me get some. Definitely want some. All right. So at one nine, we have David Wilsey. How you doing, man? Doing good, fellas. Thanks for inviting me on to do this thing with a whole bunch of really smart people. And um, excited to hop on with y'all and, and talk about uh, talk about a pick here. Yeah. So D- David has the uh, the unique uh, running back. What what is it? Unique, unique. RB analytics, right? right. There we go. Yeah, yeah, and that's yes. uh, the process that I developed and um, kind of have advanced through the last few years, and it does uh, it does pretty it does pretty well through the through the process and my evaluations and stuff. I've done pretty well projecting these last few three draft classes. So. Yeah. All right. So at 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 one nine, uh, it must be a running back, right? We're gonna stick with the brand, and I like I like I asked right when uh, you gave me the pick. I was like, man, this you know, it's th- this class. A lot of people, we we always kind of go through the phases of where you know the class is really weak, and then people, you know, you always get the tweet. I thought the class was weak because one guy does something or something. No, the the the, the 2022 class, as far as running backs are concerned in my opinion, is is still pretty light. Certainly. But my pick is, in my opinion, a reach, but I'm going to go with the third running back off the board. Number 63 pick overall, James Cook to the Buffalo Bills. I mean, a lot of people are comparing this to Clyde edwards Hilaire or to Trey Sermon as far as like the boost in hype because of situation. And I mean, that that's really the only thing way you can really compare the situations i mean they're they're not similar as far as prospects not similar as far as really the landing spots overall i mean you you have definitely some situational upside with cook as he lands in buffalo because he and zach moss are as it sits right now the only two guys that are um, under contract next year but Buffalo, you know, you have Josh Allen, who's regularly, unless he just stops doing it, all of a sudden regularly going to steal some attempts. You have two other running backs, one that we know is going to be used. And then Zach Moss, like, you, they, you know, they, they use him. They don't use him. He gets he gets a healthy, healthy scratch. scratch yeah. And then he comes in and gets two goal line rushing touchdowns <laughs> the next week. Like, right. So, I mean, we're, we're really unsure about the situation and how it's going to play out as a whole. But we have to believe that if, you know, Buffalo, they can't really be laughed at, you know, like they used to be able to. They're a smart mm-hmm. team. So we have to believe that if they are taking a running back in a light class and a class that is so heavily loaded overall because of all the returns from, you know, the COVID season, allowing the extra year of eligibility, the class was just packed in general. And they they reached in my opinion, but they, I mean, they went up and got him. So we have to believe that they legitimately have a plan to, to, to utilize his skill set. And for fantasy, the receiving skill set is, you know, with a running back, you definitely want that for legitimate upside. It's just with cook. I mean, handling work is a big thing for me in college. It it, it translates and James cook handled less than seven touches per game in the whole of his college career. You, you can't compare him to his brother. They, they, I mean, he's he's not a bell cow. He's fancy Tony Pollard in my mind. And that plays, but only if they, you know, if the, if the Bills utilize, utilize it him enough. Right. So we have to hope that they're a smart team. They spent the pick on him. They're going to do it. And again, he's him and Moss, the only guys that are under contract following this year. They took um, a undrafted free agent, Raheem Blackshear, who they gave some guaranteed money to, who is pretty. I mean, yeah, I have him as a satellite profile. So, I mean, another guy who 
has that type of skill set. So maybe that signals that, you know, they are, I mean, it might be a little bit of positive sign that they're adding two guys that kind of specialize in a similar thing. So um, we're going to cross our fingers and, and hope that the 109 selection, James Cook, is not too much of a reach and the Bills, you know, use the player that they, they moved up to get. Yeah. I almost feel like he talked me out of the pick right there. <laughs> yeah, and see, yeah, like that's I, I, that's why I was like, can I trade back? Because I'd really like to take him at like two hundred two. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. So, that's where that's about where I feel comfortable. Maybe even the two one. I can't get too mad at that. But yeah, and I mean, we'll see how things kind of play out through the off season. You know, maybe we get a lot of buzz, and you know, at, at what point does like coach speak and and buzz? start to outweigh like you know does the reward outweigh the the risk you know so i mean if we hear a lot of it then maybe we can start feeling a little bit better about it do you i hear a lot of if he puts on 10 pounds do you think he can do that i mean he already put on like 10 pounds before the combine (laughs) didn't he i mean i don't don't think I, i mean i don't think he hit 200 and that was Honestly, right. That's fine for me. I mean, I'm, I'm not a sizist, so to speak. Like the optimal range is two ten to two thirty, but optimal doesn't mean that other guys can't be good. And if you are going to be smaller, have a receiving skill set, and he has that. So, yeah. I mean, as long as he's not a complete liability in pass protection, which I mean, he, he probably you know he needs a little bit of work, but who does? Um, Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Coming out of so college. Very, anyway. very, very few. Very few. You know, the, it's it's sad that the best one just had to run so slow. Yeah. Kyron. You know, yeah. Hey, yeah. man, pour one out for yeah. Kyron. <laughs> you know. So. Um, but, pro day, yeah. Got it up at the pro day, though. Yeah. yeah God, who knows <laughs> with pro day times. Right. It's. Yeah. He's faster yeah, than that time. So, we just, we just. No, yeah. and I, I believe so. And the people were panicking, and saying, "I'm drafted," and it's like, you guys, the NFL wasn't. They, the NFL didn't know how fast he was when he was getting third round butts. Right. So, I mean, they, they watched. He was running for day two capital. He didn't get it. Landed on a. The team, as far as opportunity wise, like if you get the opportunity, it's great. But they don't exactly have a lot of it. Like they, you know, they're not like LA doesn't throw to their running backs a ton or, you know, like, like they don't spread around a ton of carries. Mm -hmm. So like he's at this point, probably just a depth piece waiting for injury. But like, if you, you know, if you get the role there, there. it's true. It's true. And if you get the role there, as we've seen, like, you know, it kind of doesn't matter who you are, you're going to do something. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, so we've kind of asked everybody this question in in the first round. Where would be the spot where you would trade out of that spot for a random twenty twenty three first? Like, is it one four, one six, one eight? Like, what's the spot where you would give up a random twenty twenty three first to trade you, out? You, you, yeah, you'd, you'd get the twenty three random right. first Sorry. to trade Poor your twenty two pick. Get rid of my pick. Um, the spot would have probably been about four months ago. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, it's, I mean, probably right in that range, 104 to 16. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm a huge Bijan proponent, like Gibbs. The, the, the next class is loaded as far yeah. as, I mean, not just the running back position. So, I mean, honestly, if you're, if you're looking to acquire 2023 first you might already be too late yeah so. all right well so we got james cook reluctantly at one nine and if you're well, listening to this mock <laughs> no one's trading their 23 first because every single person has been like i gotta get that 23 first so yeah, yeah exactly all right we'll, we'll see you back for the two nine sounds good fellas so at 110 we have jeff bell the lead dynasty analyst over at Football Guys, and you can catch the podcast at the Debbie Royale and him on Twitter at for whom J Bell tolls. So how you doing, buddy? I thought Good it was man. trolls. <laughs> well, there's some of that occasionally, so you know, it, 
It's it's all in the in mixed bag. What you're all gonna, encompassing. Gonna get, so when yeah. yeah. first started following you, I was like, uh, this guy, this guy's, uh, he's getting quote tweeted. You know, <laughs> I get quote tweeted quite you're often. Just, you're just messing around. It's I like it. Yes. I like it. Yeah, that's that's uh, really it. You know, it's uh, I really just tr- I'm trying to have fun, and yeah, you know, some people don't really know how to take it, and should be the know. point, right? You know, you know that. Yeah, well, one would think fantasy Twitter's football and fun. No, oh, Twitter's no. not for fun. Twitter's for 100 percent accuracy. All right, that's <laughs> right. it. That's right. That's right. 100 percent accuracy, actionable content. That's all we want out of you. Right. So uh, we're at 110 here. Who who are you 100 percent right on taking this pick? So I took Chris Olave, and I think okay. Chris Olave, um, you know, I talked about, we kind of talked about it previously. I think there's a clear top seven in this draft. Maybe you can push it out to eight. You can include Sky more in that tier, but I have Chris Olave right there. I, I think worth talking about along with the other top wide receivers in the class. So sitting at the 110, he kind of stuck out, stuck out to me like a sore thumb there. Um, I'm always going to take him. You know, if, if I'm in that range and Chris Olave is on the board, I'm going to grab it. I, it, it's probably worth noting that in year one production, when we had this draft, Jarvis Landry was not a New Orleans Saint yet. And mm-hmm. so um, I, I think that hurts, I think obviously, clearly. That hurts yeah. his year one, one production there. But um, I, I think it's a great opportunity for him where he's going to be allowed to grow in that wide receiver room with Landry taking the pressure off, with Michael Thomas taking the pressure off. And Thomas is a guy that um, – they go back. They go. They were both California high school wide receiver stars, and then they both went to Ohio State. So they there's a relationship between the two of them, and they've talked previously. So uh, I think it's a good mentor mentee relationship that Alave is going to step into. And at the one ten, he's a, he's a slam dunk at that point. You think can't guard Mike is 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 going to be a saint? I expect him to be a saint. I, okay. I think that um, it it's very prohibitive to get his contract off the books is probably mm-hmm. part of it. Um, mm-hmm. And I know that, that, you know, we've seen some of the, in the, in the NFL movement has opened up and those type of things. He can always redo his deal and, and maybe that would be uh, done, but I think the saints kind of feel like they're pretty competitive. And I think that it seems yeah. like some of the, um, you know, the, the bad feelings that uh, is water on the bridge just from um, how he's acted on social media compared to where he was, you know, a year and a half ago, sure. like acting on social media. So, yeah, he's doing better. The, 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 the Saints seem to not be a big kind of like the Ravens in recent history where there's not a whole lot of rebuilding. and They just kind of reload for a second and, and they've been right there. Obviously, some of that helps when you have Drew Brees that entire time um, and the same coach. Uh, but so we shall see kind of where the Saints go. Um, so this is a super flex draft, obviously. Where would, would Kenny Pickett be before or after Olave if available? For me, Kenny Pickett would be after. Um, I okay. understand the value on it. I just think that it's, I don't know. I, I, I view him as a guy that has a lower ceiling that I don't know that I'm, um, I don't know if he's a guy that's really competitive for you in a two quarterback super flex league, the way that quarterbacks have trended in the NFL. It's kind of one of those guys I'd, I'd much rather... He's kind of a quarterback 2.5 or quarterback three to me, I think, um, in terms of ceiling. I, I just he, I don't know that he's going to have that rushing that translates to the NFL. And so I don't know that he's got the potential to crack into that quarterback one range. And really, when I'm building super flex rosters, I want two quarterbacks that can crack into that quarterback one range. Yeah. And and hopefully a third that that is very serviceable. That's right. right. Um, which I think Kenny Pickett could be, and and we've said it before. Like you know, you're not going to solve your super flex problems in this dr- rookie draft. You know, a lot of times if you don't nail it in the startup and you don't get two good ones, which I'm with you, man. I like to get two really good ones and worry about the rest of this stuff later. Uh, but you know, I could see taking Pickett. I, I'm fi- I'm fine if you wanted to take Pickett and get a, get that third quarterback because if he does hit a little bit, you, you're going to be able to to get some value and trade that. That third quarterback is so valuable in Superflex to be able to trade and go get like a, a higher tier running back or, you know, a, and I do think that the rushing ability is underrated. You know, we had uh, Kane Fossilon who made that pick at 1-7. Fassell. Fassell. God damn it. Sorry, Kane. I knew, I, we, <laughs> I blew that. <laughs> Good call, Casey. Kane Fassell, uh, which he owns Fossil too because he gets he, people get that wrong all the time. My bad, Kane. Uh, but, you know, he brought up the fact that, that, that the rushing ability is a little underrated. You, you disagree with that? Or you, you said he, you didn't think it would translate to the NFL? 
I'm not entirely convinced it's going to translate. I think he's maybe a guy that um, he can get you potentially get himself out of trouble. Maybe if it's one of those things that we see occasionally, if you give the quarterback five yards, he's able to take five yards slide and get down on the ground and Mm -hmm. he might be able to do those type of things. I'm not convinced that um, he's going to be this guy that can rip off a 15, 20 yard run or, you know, score from 12 yards out with somewhat consistency. Um, I I just don't, I don't know. I, he could be there. He's got functional athleticism. He's got yeah. decent speed. You know, he's like a four seven guy. And and so that's mm-hmm. yep. that's okay ish, you know, but he's also, you know, I've seen some comparisons to Justin Herbert in terms of athleticism with him, and it's just not there. Um, Herbert's twenty pounds heavier and ran a four six, whereas you know, Pickett's kind of two fifteen guy that ran a four seven, you know, mm-hmm. and, and that that combination of size speed, it it plays out you know it's it's one of those that i don't know that you really want him running around either and so i kind of see him as um you know mac jones plus a little bit more you know mac jones plus maybe an extra point or two rushing the ball is kind of where i see it playing out and and that's kind of the ceiling and it's just not a real ceiling that i'm interested in i understand i don't know i understand super flex value and i understand that if that's a need but to me that feels like if that's already a need on your roster, it's still going to be a need next year. Like you're still going to want to like look at maybe Bryce Young or CJ Stroud coming out because you're still not going to feel great. Kenny Pickett being your quarterback too long term. And so I do think that if you take him too early outside of the elite guys that are there in wide receiver and running back, you're almost creating two problems where you're missing on having that piece that you can build a roster around and and an elite position player but then you're also taking that quarterback that you don't really feel great about either and so that's yeah. kind of always been my pushback on where i would really take him it, essentially i have him in ranked where um, somebody else is going to draft him before i really am because i yeah. kind of push him closer to like I, I still feel like i'd rather bet on christian watson or Jahan dotson just because um I just don't see the ceiling and I don't really know that I believe um, one of the arguments I've seen was that he's got insulated value that if he's bad year one, you can still move off him for a pick. And it's like, well, you can't move off him for a 23 first right now. And we, he could be good. And and so you're not certainly if he's bad, you're not going to be able to move him off for one of those picks. And so the other thing, too, he's sitting kind of in that back end quarterback two range, even in dynasty rankings for being as young as he is. It, I think I've seen him even as low as quarterback 25. And so it's one of those that what value are you insulating? You're not if he's just bad, you're going to be worried that the yeah. Steelers are going to replace him sooner rather than later. And you, I think the whole league and, and kind of consensus will move in that direction. Yeah, they, they want to win right now. The Steelers are another franchise. So, you know, if maybe Mitchell gets the nod or, or if, if Pickett's not answering the bell, maybe maybe you get a little Mitchell in year one and, and put some doubt in some dynasty owners. I don't know that that's necessarily going to happen. Um, but One more I, point to the to the rushing with, with Pickett is I'm not necessarily like excited about the fantasy production that he's going to get from rushing, but he can extend drives, and that's what he did a lot in college. And if you can extend drives and get crucial third down, similar to kind of an Aaron Rodgers early in his career, uh, being able to extend drives and, and just pick up little chunks here and there, maybe get you one, two, three points on the ground, you know, that's fine, icing on the cake. But extending those drives keeps the play alive, and now you have more uh, uh, scoring opportunities if you can extend drives. So that's kind of one thing I'm excited about with Pickett. Not not super excited. But I didn't. One I didn't know I that. Like. I didn't know that Jason was such a Pickett fan. I'm, he's growing on me, you know. Um, so real quick, back to Olave before we get off this pick, and we've probably gone too long as it is. But uh, would you trade that 110 with Olave there for a random 23 first? Oh yeah, without question. Yeah. yeah. See ya. Yeah, yeah, without See, question. Okay, I'd grab okay. Point class. straight out of the de- the Devi Devi Royale. There, you heard it. You got you got all the Bills gear in the background. Uh, Cook went one pick before that. Was there? If he would have been around, would there be any uh, want to to desire to to go ahead and grab your guy, Buffalo Bill James Cook? No, I, I'd It'd not even be close. Alave. Yeah, I yeah. Agree. No, I'm I'm comfortably. I mean, Alave went 11th in the NFL draft, and Alave yeah. is an incredibly productive wide receiver. I think the situation is fantastic for him, um, and I, he's my 
he's my 107 and yeah. it's pretty you know I, and i think i can push sky more kind of a little bit at the 108 and kind of a little bit to have that conversation especially with them adding jarvis landry i feel like even though it's one year it kind of raises a little bit of question I, I think that's there and um so but after that, you know, I probably defer to, I believe I have Jahan Dotson pretty high and Christian Watson pretty high as well. And yeah. then I would probably think about going with James Cook. All right. Fair enough. Right there with you. All right. Coming in at 111, we got Matt Hicks. Uh, you can find him on Twitter at the FF underscore educator. And of course, the creator of the rookie big board. Uh, they got a podcast and you can find it on Patreon any which way you want to find that. How you doing, Matt? On the clock at 111. I'm feeling good, man. I am still fully soaking in the 2022 rookie class, enjoying these rookie drafts through the whole summer. Already digging into the 2023 class, so, man, I love it. It's a 365 exercise for me, and uh, it's pretty fun the way this board has fallen. Yeah. So, at 111, what, uh, what are you thinking here? Yeah, man, I got to tell you, I thought I was going to get lucky. My guy, Chris Olave, almost fell to me. He dropped all the way to 110. I thought I was going to get pretty lucky, but I got to tell you, I'm not even trying. And I think it's funny it ended up in this mock draft. I have 100% exposure to this player in my rookie drafts this year, and it's Jahan Dotson, wide receiver out of Penn State, now with Washington. I had the chance to watch Jahan Dotson live last year. Uh, I was at the Maryland game when he just absolutely ripped (laughs) them. Three touchdowns, took the top off of that defense. I mean, we're talking about speed. We're talking about route running ability, quickness, uh, really nice handwork for Dotson. You know, I know folks are maybe a little turned off by the landing spot, but I actually have a really strong projection for Jahan Dotson. I think he can be a wide receiver three, potentially even a back-end wide receiver two. If you look at that offense, really look at the numbers, there are targets to go around, right? Like we're a year removed from folks being really excited about Diami Brown, and Jahan Dotson is that plus plus. Sure. Uh, and so I think there's real opportunity. And, hey, maybe we don't get Pete Carson Wentz. Maybe we do, right? And right. so a lot of upside. And at 111 – I mean, I think that's a fantastic value. Yeah, I, I I agree. We've we've done some. I don't. I can't say I'm at a hundred percent, but for sure in our FFPC drafts that we did, uh, I believe that was like Mother's Day area. Uh, he was there pretty much consistently at, at two four. Which get off the um, Mother's Day FFPC? <laughs> yeah, ridiculous. You hate <laughs> mothers? <laughs> the fuck. Um, but. You know, we pretty much ended up with him everywhere in that draft, whether it was trading back from from 2-1 to 2-4 to maybe even trying to trade back a little bit more. So definitely agree with that. And, I mean, yeah, everyone likes to drag Carson Wentz, but, I mean, decent quarterback. I mean, nobody's – I can't – I can't – you can crush him if you want to, but better than what they've had over there, probably the best that they've had in a while. And, and we've seen – we see how fast landscapes can change these days. Terry needs mm-hmm. a deal. Curtis Samuel's perpetually injured, and he needs – I think they got an out for him next year. Um, well, it so, sounds like McLaurin is probably going to get a deal. They're I, talking it up. So, like, if so, he does but, get a deal, does that change anything long-term for your out- outlook of uh, Jahan Dotson? I don't necessarily think so. You know, I think what's nice about Dotson is he comes with versatility, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, And I think it's only going to help him if F1 is on the field, right? Because he's going to pull that top coverage. You can move Dotson inside. You can push him opposite side. There's some flexibility there. And I think it gives Washington the opportunity to be creative. Uh, And I think Carson Wentz, again, you know, obviously I know there's the tale of two quarterbacks there, but he has the ability to support two fantasy football wide receivers. I'm not – super worried about that and we have a really balanced running attack too so you know i think defenses are gonna have to you know pay particular attention to Jahan dotson with other factors you know in front of him so i think there's a little bit of mismatch opportunity here yeah i agree i really like the pick um so you would have taken olave if possible here at at 111 Oh, man, I, if, if this was an actual draft where I could have traded up, I would have been on the clock. I, Chris Olave is my wide receiver one in this class. So Ooh, love that. You know, to see him fall the way the board fell there and, you know, Sky Moore going in front of him. And, you know, uh, certainly Jamison Williams is an excellent talent, but with the injury. Uh, so to see Olave go off the board wide receiver six, uh, you know, that's 
uh, exciting for me. I, I would have jumped on that. So if uh, for, if James Cook was available, would you have taken James Cook in, in lieu of uh, Jahan Dotson? No, Cook for me is in a different tier. I think that's a real drop off. And, you know, I, I should say, you know, maybe not that significant of a drop off. I do like James Cook. I think he's got his role. But I think with Jahan Dotson, I mean, we're talking about a player that grabbed uh, top 20 draft capital, right? Mm-hmm. We're talking about a player that's going to come in and have a significant role uh, right off the bat. And I like James Cook. I think he's going to be used well in Buffalo, but uh, I'm taking the talent as it falls for me at the board. I think folks that are taking James Cook consistently in that like 108 to 112 range are reaching a little bit on positional value. Mm -hmm. And that's not something I encourage folks to do. I encourage folks to draft the value and then trade for need down the road. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm all for trying to, you know, it is hard to trade for a running back. I'll say that, but I'm not going to reach for James Cook. You know, I'll take Kenneth Walker because it's hard to get running backs. Let me get Kenny real high, higher than probably, most people, not over Brees Hall, but like probably right after Brees. I mean, I you know, you want to take Drake, you want to take any of those wide receivers, I'm fine. You know, Kenneth Walker, but though I'm, I'm fine if you want to reach for that positional scarcity, right. but not with James Cook. If, if, the, if the caliber of the player is up there, I'm okay with maybe jumping a little bit lesser of a running back over a receiver just because that I feel like it's probably the easiest way to replenish that running back room. Uh, but I agree with you uh, for the most part there. Uh, so no, no Christian Watson because that would seem like the sexy pick for almost everybody going on, and we've we've done some battle with some people on this podcast about that. So I would take Jahan Dotson over Christian Watson 100 percent of the time. Um, Hundred? What, what if you're th- in a lot of drafts? What are your thoughts? <laughs> yeah, you see, it's so funny with Christian Watson, man. I I remember first doing his film review back in December. I drop in a senior bowl preview in January and hyping this guy up because at that point in time, right. If you were doing a, a rookie draft for some weird reason in December or January, he probably wouldn't have registered in the first four rounds. And I was hyping this guy up. I was so excited about him. I'm like, guys, this guy's going to be a steal in the third round. He was my deep sleeper. Yeah. Then all of a sudden he goes to the senior bowl, man. He blows it up. He goes to the combine. He blows it up. And then all of a sudden, you know, you blink your eyes. He's a first round draft pick. And I'm yeah. like, we've gone too far. Right? right. I think the important thing to remember about Christian Watson is as dynamic as he is, as a contested catch guy, as athletic and fast as he is to match that size. He's still raw, man, right? Like he's not only uh, playing with limited experience, he's playing in an offense that doesn't throw the ball significantly. That's just not uh, North Dakota State's game, right? right. So he's going to have op- – or he's going to need time to develop, right? And what I'm also worried about, right, is is Watson is a great match with Aaron Rodgers, but I think it might take Watson until year two or three to really hit his stride, which is fine, by the way. We right, get impatient right. with wide receivers. But where's Aaron Rodgers in three years? Sure. Right? Is he still yeah. with the Packers? Maybe, maybe not. Yeah, I don't know yeah. what that man's doing six months from now. <laughs> For sure. A hundred percent. That's, you know, in the same vein of, of some of the arguments we've made, uh, you know, against Watson on this podcast. So we don't need to get super down that line. Um, let's, let's wrap this pick up with, with the question we've asked most, uh, participants in this at this time is where, where is the line of demarcation that you would trade the random 23, uh, first out, out of this 22 pick here? Is it, would it be your Jahan Dotson? You, you, you always, that you always ask that the wrong, you were trying to, we're trying to get what, what, which of these 22 picks would you trade away to get the 23 first, the random 23 first? Yeah, you know, it's uh, – I think – and I like Dotson. But, I, you know, if you're sitting there at 111 and you can get a random 23 first. So, you know, uh, in the rookie big board, I, I you know, assign a, a value and then kind of like a tier to players, right? And so I have Dotson as a 7-4, which, you know, would fall in my uh, flex filler – or I'm sorry, my weekly starter tier. So I think he's going to come in at a nice wide receiver three, wide receiver two, Right. You know, if you look at uh, spot 12 right now, and it's early, you know, certainly my summer scouting spot 12 next year uh, is an an 8.0 right now, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, We're talking about higher upside in next year's class. And if you have the opportunity, you know, I always say if you're trading for a quote random first round pick, you're trading for the 106, right? 
The 106 next year, man, we're talking Jordan Addison. We're talking Jackson Smith and Jig by Keyshawn Boutte. We're talking about wide receivers with a lot higher of a ceiling. And again, I like Dotson, right? But I would certainly trade that 111 for the opportunity to kick the can down the road a little bit. And quite frankly, you know, 23 picks are at a premium right now. I'd argue that they're overvalued at this point. So Big if you can get your hands on one, you know, I think that's a good price and a good buy-in point. So where where would it be where would be on this board where you would say I got to make the pick? Yeah, ah, uh, certainly through one five. I think Kenneth Walker at one five is a steal. Uh, Sky Moore at one six. Uh, that's probably my breaking point if, there. If, I think I'd if rather. If that was a Lave have, though, you would you'd be. Fine. Oh, I would pick a Lave. That would, that would yeah, bump certainly. down one more. I'd say six picks. Yeah. Okay. Ah, man, I like Jameson Williams a ton. Six or seven picks. Yeah, right at that 106, 107. Yeah. Yeah. We we traded uh, a random 23 first to get 17 and take Jameson Williams in a super flex. That's fair. Uh, That's fair. And then, some people like that. Some people hate it. I think it's whatever you right? feel, you yeah. know? Yeah, no, that's good. That's good. And I'm quite frankly, I'm not a patient dynasty player. Yeah. <laughs> I want my points and I want them now. Yeah. So <laughs> sounds like a, I don't blame you. Sounds like a, 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 a used car salesman uh, or no, uh, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the attorneys, the, the ambulance chasers. I yeah. want my money and I want it now. Like, <laughs> yeah. Got we, a lot of those down here. We so did, I don't know we, how you yeah. guys do with those commercials up there, but. We did have another 23 first, so we didn't trade our only piece of the 23 class away. Uh, and we, we traded the one we thought would be worse than. than Which the, is always wrong. So Yeah. I dig it. Always <laughs> wrong. Always wrong. All, All right, right man. man. We'll see you back for the uh, 211. All right. We're in the last pick of the first round. We got Derek Brown of the Fantasy Pros. You can catch him at Debro underscore FFB. And, of course, you can find all his work at fantasypros.com how you doing Derek what's going on guys uh back to talk uh, a little bit about this mock and some of the picks and honestly some of the stuff that went down during it yeah so you're on the clock at 112 who are you wrapping the first round I mean I think this is a pretty yeah layout on. for you here <laughs> I but know. I mean last time we we're on the show we sit here and fought about this player so I mean yeah. of course I got to take him and you know do the pile driver here I mean yeah, that's, I, that's that's the go-to right home. I like it here I like it here 112 I'm, I'm fine with it who you got Ah, I got to take Christian Watson going to Green Bay, man. Like, yeah. the uh, you know, I, I know that everybody has talked about how raw he is and, and the downside and stuff like that. But the upside is still absolutely real. Sure. And I think it's a fantastic fit in Green Bay. I mean, in diving into a lot of the numbers and stuff and just how that offense runs, Aaron Rodgers loves to pepper the short and intermediate parts of the field. I mean, that's. His bread and butter. Like over the last three seasons, he's been 13th, 8th, and 13th, and pass attempts between zero and nine yards. Now yeah. you marry that with Christian Watson, guys. Yeah. Like this is a player we're talking has been 12th, 7th, and 17th amongst all FBS and FCS receivers and yak per reception over the last three seasons. Right. So yeah. give it to him. Let him do work, man. Yeah. Yeah, we know the athletic profile is really good, and, and just get the ball in his hands, and like you said, let him let him do his thing. So I think that was a pretty easy easy pick for you. I got a I got a Go I got a question. We'll Go let's interject it here. Would you trade that pick for a random twenty three first? Um, if Watson wasn't there, I would. Um, considering he fell to the one twelve, which a lot of in a lot of leagues you see him gone by the one nine, one ten. Yeah. So yeah. if he wasn't there, like if I was staring, and I'll look at the guys that are a little bit behind us. Like if I was staring at George Pickens, yeah, I'd have traded it. We know you don't like him. What about James White? I don't like you hate the guy. I'm just saying, like, <laughs> if you're asking me, am I gonna invest you in like, George don't Pickens? Love him. Or am I going to kick the can down the road and maybe I Fair. get an upgrade of the of the pick in next year's draft or at worst I'm sitting at the one twelve again? Right, right. Then yeah, I mean I'm gonna kick the can down the road versus like being like, Yay, let's go, George Pickens, and I'm so, just gonna stare at the screen like him. And, and I get that. I can't even argue with that, kicking it down to the twenty three class given where Pickens was gone here. What if James Cook was there at one twelve? Would you would you take James Cook or the twenty three first? Yeah, I mean, I probably would lean the 23 first. Now, I would take James Cook, and this kind of comes to a bigger idea about diversifying. If you have a lot of dynasty leagues, getting exposure to a lot of different players um, yeah. at picks. You know, because you don't want to, like, say, I got 20 dynasty leagues and say, I got 
20 leagues where I drafted <laughs> this Christian only. Watson. Yeah. Like, you want to right. diversify and get some different exposures to talented players and some hit, some bust, and, you know. And in that realm, I would have gone James Cook. Outside of that, eh, probably kicking it. Yeah. Fair. All right. All right, so Christian Watson at 112. We did it. We made it through the first round. What do you know? It only took us, like, well over an hour, like a long <laughs> time. Appreciate y'all for staying with us, but I hope you did because – that was a lot of information. Like, if you had any questions about any of these rookies, they're going to get answered in this fucking series. So stay tuned. Hopefully tomorrow I will have the next one drop, round two. And we'll hit round three, round four. Then we got a nice recap video with everybody t- saying who they did and didn't like and what picks were good and what picks sucked. Um, that's, make sure you subscribe, like, comment on the video below. That would greatly help us out. You want this dope T-shirt, go to the RevelryBrewingCo.com find the ff dynasty t-shirt help to help your boys out we're over on patreon we're mocking it up as we speak uh we're constantly getting in that chat get on the discord <sighs> if you're on the podcast hit us with a five star subby to the five star review 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 it'd be great anything else case i'm worn out shout out to everybody that joined yeah. us all these experts appreciate Fantastic. y'all you, you stuck with us you said you, you said you were gonna come on and you did it we got y'all on it was great Love y'all. Appreciate it. Peace.